Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. I repeat, this is not a commercial announcement. The producers and distributors of this film advise against, I repeat, advise against anyone seeing it who is easily frightened. Splashdown is scheduled for 9.45 Pacific Standard Time. Weather conditions in the splashdown zone are clear and favorable. The Navy is standing by to recover the capsule as soon as it hits the target area. Frogmen will then secure the flotation belt and open the entry hatch. And welcome back. So here we go. You've just had the trailer for Alien 2 on Earth. The 88 Films uh, website says the following blurb. It says, When Dawn of the Dead was released in Italy as Zombie, the late great Lucio Fulci took it upon himself to make his own sequel, Zombie 2, also known as Zombie Flesh Eaters. Thus proving that copyright was a grey area back in the 1980s, director Sergio Ippolito decided that there was nothing to stop him making a follow-up to Ridley Scott's sci-fi suspenser Alien, resulting in the birth of Alien 2 on Earth. 
This Italian offering came six years before Aliens and with a bevy of low budget charm and the occasional spilled brain spill, spins out of a story of an extraterrestrial terror landing in the here and now and stalking its prey in the contemporary California. Putting themselves up against this otherworldly entity is a small group of explorers and seasoned fans of Italian shock will doubtlessly notice the great Michel Suave. I, I know I pronounced his name wrong, I'm sorry Tim, but I, that's how I pronounce it, uh, from A Blade in the Dark and Phenomena amongst the cast. Arguably more exciting than Alien 3 decades later and Alien 2 on Earth might as well be the film that Fincher wishes he had made. See it now and decide for yourselves thanks to the amazing HD restoration from 88 Films. The special features on the disc is a 2K master source uncompressed LPCM English sim track, franchise terrorists an interview with Eli Roth, special effects test footage, a trailer, a trailer reel, reversible sleeve with alternative art and of course the collectible original poster postcard as well swinging along with it. I will say before we kick into this that um, the interview with Roth is pretty cool. Uh, I have a lot of time listening to Eli Roth don't have a lot of time watching his movies but I have a lot of time listening to the man talk he's clearly passionate about Italian cinema just in general um, the chronology and timeline seemed a bit off because he was talking about how he'd been raving about the movie for years but only found out about it through Instagram Instagram's not been around that long Roth so um, you're either exaggerating slightly or you maybe saw the movie before and couldn't remember where you saw it you were just pinning something on it um, but yeah, it's, it's cool, he kind of talks you through the schlock of it, um, how brash uh, the Italians were and just ripping things off, and how he admires that, which you would never uh, have guessed having seen some of Roth's outings, you know, he kind of wears his influences sometimes further than his sleeve and plastered all over his face with big neon arrows saying, yes, I have seen, I have seen Cannibal Ferox, yes, I've seen Cannibal Holocaust, and Green Inferno is not as good as either. Um, but that's just a little bit of personal bias slipping in, just slipping into my review. So let's take a second here and talk about the plot synopsis. What actually happens in Alien 2 on Earth? So unlike Alien, which is set in the future and in space, this movie is set in the here and now in contemporary Earth. That's right, just to throw everything up in the air and confuse and muddle everything. Although it says Alien 2, but it's really just trading off the name. It's not necessarily trading off the xenomorphs, if you know what I mean. So what we do is we follow a group of friends, a group of explorers who have decided to go cave spelunking. And while they're out and about traveling towards their adventure location, they happen upon this ridiculously blue rock. I mean, this looks like otherworldly shit and no one seems concerned. Instead, what they decide to do is bring on the trip with them, because nothing says you're having a good time like spelunking with a fucking luminous blue rock. But I sarcastically digress. Anyway, the movie really starts at uh, um, a new station where they're talking about some space capsules which are going to come back to Earth, um, and yeah, we, we get a lot of padding right at the start of this. Like, so much at the start of this, it's kind of funny. Um, the director here, I genuinely think, I mean, the movie's about an hour and 20 long, and I think that the script was maybe about 40 minutes long. So there's a lot of really long shots of things happening, and people doing things which are maybe not that interesting. But anyway, um, as, you know, as we're building up for this beginning of talking about the capsule coming, this is when um, we we find out that um, in fact it's even weirder now that I think about it. One of the one of the women that's on the the panel has a psychic vision um, as well out of nowhere, and uh, all of a sudden like all the TVs switch down. It's never really explained away at all, um, but she's going spelunking, so that's okay. But yeah, the, the capsules that are coming down. The insinuation is that they brought something with them that shouldn't be on here. And then we basically pad out about maybe about 40 minutes, 45 minutes of we're at the beach. Oh, someone's face has been removed by an alien, which is actually a kind of cool, schlocky visual effect. And then after that, nothing happens at all until we're in the caves. And then the aliens start picking them off one at a time. And when I say the aliens start picking them off one at a time, 
that's maybe maybe unfair in that we don't get a whole lot of alien but we do get a whole lot of kind of goofy gory visual effects there is a particular eye falling out of a socket kind of hanging out of a socket which is really really bad and that Eli Roth thing that I was talking about earlier on I would have swore he had saw that before making Hostel because the visual effect kind of looks on par with the, the girl's eye hanging out they are not that great um, but yeah so um, the aliens are kind of portrayed here as kind of weird tentacles uh, they eat faces right uh, or like weird pulsating blue stones right you got you follow me now um, basically everyone in the team of Spelunkers is picked off one at a time and it leaves us with uh, two characters Thelma and Roy who managed to escape um, kind of shades of the descent but they managed to escape the underground um, spelunking vacation trip and head back into town but the place is sparsely populated uh, they go back to a bowling alley which was featured earlier on in the movie for no real reason other than to pad some time and um, at this point Roy becomes afflicted and the movie finishes ultimately with Thelma running along the streets which are empty screaming for help but no one's there to help her the insinuation being that maybe the aliens have wiped out the population um, although we never get to see that and I would argue that's maybe the more interesting movie uh, but who cares who cares um, yeah this movie is not great <laughs> Uh, this is one of these ones where I really wanted to like it, like I really really wanted to like it. On paper I, I quite like the kind of schlocky rip off, you know, extended sequel universe of the Italian cinema. I, I can get behind that, uh, but the, the, the cast are just boring, I mean they're not even bad, they're just really really boring. Michel Suave does his best, he's probably the highest talent in this movie. There's a little bit of nudity here and there. The gore effects are pretty much out in your face. It's Lamberto Marini uh, who, who does most of the effects here, but there's not enough of them really to kind of stand out and, and slap you in the face. They're just kind of interspersed in between really banal storytelling. Like I say, the cinematography is just really long shots and I'm not quite sure why the shots are as long as they are. Um, and it's mundane shit that's happening as well so I don't really know why that happened as well um, I mean it's, it's interesting that you do a bit of reading and in, in behind the, the scenes I mean uh, Ippolito went under the pseudonym uh, Sam Cromwell had originally approached Mario Bava to do the movie and Bava passed because Bava knows him some shit when he sees it and yeah, the, the movie itself comes out and then, of course, it gets a bit of backlash. You have 20th Century Fox, like, I don't... I, obviously for the name, not for the content of the movie, it takes a swipe at it. I believe from what I've read online there was two lawsuits against it, because he used Alien in the title. And, um, yeah, like, Ippolito was a clever, clever man. He actually used uh, a case in point the fact that there was a novel from the 1930s that had already used the name Alien so it wasn't owned by 20th Century Fox so yeah he won that case uh, one could argue that the world is maybe 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 better for not having this movie out but I'm not like that you know I'm not like that um, the second lawsuit according to the internet uh, appeared against producers of The Descent, obviously, because Ippolito was uh, was of the opinion that maybe Neil Marshall had ripped him off, but that suit disappeared very quickly because there was no real grounds for it. Um, and one is a fucking masterpiece. The Descent is genuinely one of the best horror movies in the last 25 years. And like I say, Alien 2 is a bit of a... A bit of a letdown. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed at this one. I really, really wanted to like it. I, I was kind of building myself up. I thought this could be a particular amount of sleaze that I want. I mean, it's the epitome of exploitation Italian genre fare. It kind of covers the grounds of sci-fi and horror. Neither doing... Doing neither well, to be honest. 
Um, and whilst the effects are good, and there is maybe a good film in here, it's just boring. It's a movie that's an hour and 20 long, and it slogs to get through here. I will say the score for the movie, the soundtrack, is kind of amazing. It mixes sci-fi with kind of country blues, maybe. Maybe that's a, a bit of folky music in there as well. It throws it all on the all on the plate and some of it works well and some of it doesn't. Just overall the movie just is an exercise in tedium and like I say it's a bit of a letdown. There's not enough in here for me to dislike the movie and there certainly isn't enough for me to like the movie. So when it comes to my grade I'm going to have to give it a 2.5 out of 5. I will say for completeness, yes, you're going to have to get the disc. I would say maybe pass on it if you get the opportunity. The Eli Roth interview is cool, but it's not worth the £10 I think you can buy the movie for now, £8.99. It's not worth it for that. And your life is not emboldened and enriched by owning it. Although, like I say, if you are collecting them like I'm collecting them, then you're going to buy it anyway. And that's the catch when it comes to the Italian collection series. They know that occasionally there's going to be a dud in there, but you're going to buy it because you want all the numbers on your shelf.